YouTube? This is your girl Foxy Brown and I'm coming to you once again from the legendary House of Shea. And it's February, so we know February means two things. It's the month of love and it's also Black History Month. But we also know that Black History Month as well as love is for every month. And Black History is American history. So what I'd like to do is introduce you to something that I put together for this month called If You Don't Know, Now You're Gonna Know. And we will explore different topics of black history that maybe you heard about, maybe you know, maybe you don't. But if you don't know, at the end, you're gonna know. So today's topic is the first HBCU. HBCU meaning Historically Black Colleges and Universities. So you might say, well, Foxy, that's not something that would be hard to figure out. We just have to find out which is the oldest HBCU. But it's not quite so simple because there's a little controversy as to which HBCU is the first. There's a big rivalry and there's shade thrown and it's pretty delicious. So guess what? I'm going to let you know to give you the facts and then I'm gonna let you know which one I consider to be the first HBCU so if you are one of my legendary children I'd like to ask you to please like and comment on this video let me know who you think the first HBCU is and let me know if you were right after I tell you what I think if this is your first time to my channel I'd like to ask you to kindly like comment and subscribe and now let's figure out which HBCU is the first. On February 25th, 1837, Cheney University of Pennsylvania became the nation's first historically black college and university, an HBCU. The university was established through the generosity of Richard Humphreys a Quaker philanthropist who bequeathed $10,000, which is I think the equivalent of about 250 or more thousand dollars in today's money, which was one tenth of his, of his estate. And he did so to, des to design and establish a school to educate the people of African descent and prepare them as teachers. First known as the African Institute, the school was soon renamed the Institute for Colored Youth. In its early years, it provided training in trades and agriculture, which were the predominant skills needed in the general economy. In 1902, the Institute was relocated to George Cheney's farm, a 275 acre property just 25 miles west of Philadelphia. The name Cheney became associated with the school in 1913, though the school's official name changed several times during the 20th century. Well, there you have it, Foxy. Cheney University of Pennsylvania, formerly known as the Institute for Colored Youth, founded in 1837, is the first HBCU, right? Well, not so fast. The story's not over yet because somebody is trying to take that spot. <laughs> well, legendary children and ladies and gentlemen, now we find ourselves smack dab in the middle of the controversy. It's what we call the Battle of the First. The Battle of the First is a fierce debate that's been going on for almost 170 years between these two universities. Although Cheney University hails itself as the oldest HBCU, Lincoln University also claims to hold the title as the first. Hidden away in the rural outskirts of Philadelphia, just a mere 35 minutes from each other, are Cheney University and Lincoln University, 
the two historically black colleges or universities in Pennsylvania and also the oldest in the country. Their campuses are living, moving, thriving tributes to their cultural rich communities. Each has educated and empowered students of African descent for more than a century and a half. Each has nurtured and fortified a talent pool of leaders and scholars, professionals and visionaries, and each vehemently claims the distinction of being the first HBCU. Down the stretch of what is now Route 1 South, Asman Institute was chartered in 1854 by Presbyterian minister, the Reverend John Miller Dickey and his wife, Sarah Emlyn Crescent, who was a Quaker. And they wanted to provide higher education in the arts and sciences for black men of African descent. The plan of action was to groom these men as teachers and send them, at least in part, to colonize Liberia and become missionaries to evangelize as Christians. Well, those intentions were revisited after interest in the Back to Africa movement fizzled. And also students became increasingly successful in their professional fields. So by 1866, the year the school was renamed Lincoln University in honor of the assassinated President Abraham Lincoln, there were more than 100 young black men on campus. Women were not admitted at that time. As a matter of fact, it almost took 100 years to admit women to Lincoln University in the year 1952. College rivalries run deep, particularly in a black colleges and universities. Friendly competition between the schools brings an extra excitement to the student experience and also fuels alumni pride. The rivalries can be fueled by just about anything. For instance, geographic boundaries as with Clark Atlanta University and Morehouse in Atlanta, Georgia. A naming convention such as Hampton University versus Howard University over who's the real HU. And football powerhouses like Grambling and Southern have been rivalries, fierce rivals for years. And let's not forget one of the most important parts of being an HBCU is the band. You have big rivalries such as Alabama State versus FAMU. And then the coup de grace of being in an HBCU is what? That homecoming, the greatest homecoming. And you have schools like North Carolina A&T, who says they have the greatest homecoming on earth, and schools like Tuskegee, who will give them a run for their money. Other rivalries date back so far, no one can rightfully recall when they started or why they exist in the first place. But that doesn't turn down the passion that actually fuels them. Now, in the case of Cheney versus Lincoln, the bragging rights to the title, the first HBCU, that's a big one. And it's a fierce debate. Each year when the students get together for any type of sporting activity, it's called the first, the battle of the first. Football, basketball, the battle of the first. Volleyball, whatever it is, even down to parties. And the schools probably care little about beating anyone else as much as they do each other. <laughs> now, bragging rights to the title of first HBCU, 
are probably rooted in historical perspective based on who's telling the story and who's making the case and maybe which school they went to. Okay, so Foxy, which school holds the title of the first HBCU? Well, there are two different ways of looking at it, explained Dr. George Cooper, executive director of the White House Initiative on HBCUs. Are you looking at an institution because of its chronological age, regardless of degrees offered, or are you looking at bachelor's degrees awarded? When people ask the question about the oldest HBCU, said Cooper, Lincoln University stands out because it is chartered, it was chartered in 1854 as a higher education institution. Cheney can say they existed for a longer period of time, but not as a university. They were created in 1837, but they didn't award college degrees until 1914. Well, Dr. Cooper, that's an interesting way to look at it. I respect your opinion, as well as Ms. Janelle Harris, whose article from The Root I am quoting from here. But you know what? I think I may see it a little differently. As far as Foxy is concerned, Tuesday, February 25th, 2020, will mark the 183rd birthday of Cheney University, making it the first institution of higher learning for African Americans, and in my opinion, the first HBCU. As a charter member of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education, Cheney State College became Cheney University of Pennsylvania in 1983, the oldest of the 14 member institutions and the only HBCU in the state system. While Cheney University has a rich heritage as the first institution of higher learning for African Americans, their campus today welcomes students from a variety of races, cultures, and nationalities, all of whom receive educational instruction far beyond the vision of Richard Humphreys. Cheney graduates still become teachers, but their alumni also enter careers such as journalism, medicine, business, science and technology, law, communication, and government service. The university offers bachelor's degrees in an array of disciplines and many graduates go on to secure advanced degrees in a variety of fields. There can only be one winner of the bell of the first and to me, Foxy, that winner is Cheney University. Now before we go, I just want to say we love Lincoln University as well as all of our illustrious HBCUs throughout the United States. We love and support all of our beautiful HBCU students, okay? Even though we have rivalries, we have a beautiful rich history and we have to support one another in order for us to continue to thrive. So I'd like to ask you to please remember to send monetary support to the HBCU of your choice. And remember that black history is American history. So now, if you didn't know, now you know. One more thing, I'd just like to send a thank you to the writer and editor named Janelle Harris for her contributions to this video from her article that I read and that I read from in The Root. Ms. Harris is a graduate of Lincoln and for the record, Ms. Harris concluded that Lincoln is the first HBCU. And for total full disclosure, my daughter went to Cheney University her freshman year of college. So I'm probably biased too. 
So guess what? The debate continues and it probably will continue for another 170 years. And we pray that these universities can continue to thrive and be on this planet to service our beautiful children and generations to come. Thank you very much for listening to my first installation of If You Don't Know, Then You're Gonna Know for Black History Month. And this is your girl, Foxy Brown from the legendary House of Shea. Peace and blessings.